Hello, I'm Ollie Pyle. I'm a landscape painter and today I want to show you the colours that I use in my watercolour paintings and in particular how to mix colours quickly and accurately. I'm going to show you how to use your three primaries, red, yellow and blue, and how to mix colours from that as a base. Then I'm going to introduce you to some of the earth colours as well that are very, very useful to arrive at different colours nice and quickly, vital for landscape painting, and that should give you a good grounding in the colours that you want. Of course, it's very individual, and that gives your painting a certain look as opposed to mine, because you may prefer one blue over another. But I'll show you what works for me. Let's have a play around and see how we get on. For me, because I paint UK landscapes and throughout the seasons, um, they're generally in fairly cool light and pretty much the UK landscape is grey and brown. There's a bit of green thrown in, a bit of yellow from time to time, and then you've got the blue in the sky. But if you don't know how to paint with browns and greys, then you're really going to struggle to paint the UK landscape. Now, what I recommend, and I won't be alone in saying this, is that you must get familiar with your three primary colours. I tend to have French ultramarine or ultramarine blue, cadmium red and raw sienna as the three main colours that I use. And I would say almost 80-85% of my paintings are used, uh, are made using those three colours. Now I can vary that up a little bit. If I want a cooler blue, I'll use cobalt blue. If I want a cooler uh, yellow, I'll use cadmium yellow. If I want a cooler red, I'll use crimson alizarin. And it's good to sometimes mix that up depending on what season I'm painting. In addition to that, I like to use some earth colours as well. And these are great for getting um, impact into your greys and your browns. I like to use burnt sienna. That works beautifully with ultramarine. You get some wonderful soft greys with that. Light red is another good one. And burnt umber is another that I'm, I enjoy using. If you need a really good dark or a black, try and arrive at it from your three primaries mixed together or even one of your earth colours and a blue and you'll get there as well. Now the reason it's important to, to stick to your three primaries and understand them is like we said in an earlier video. Sometimes with watercolour, in fact most of the time, it's drying on you really, really quickly and you need to mix and arrive at a colour. Now if you've got a palette full of 48 different colours, you may not actually hit the right one. But for me, I know that working from these three colours, by and large, I'm always going to find the colour that I want. I know that by putting in a little bit more yellow here, I can lighten this up to get a nice sunny green. If I need to quickly move that more towards a brown, I can put some red into that. And then if we need a shadow colour, um, I can hit my blue with a little bit of red, a little bit of yellow to calm it down, a little bit more blue. And there we are, I've got a, I've got a nice shadow colour too. And I'm familiar with these three colours. I've worked with them so much, I know the range of colours that I can find and create ever so quickly. And just out of those three, you know, there's a, there's a range of, of different colours now sort of merging together here. And by using just blue, red, yellow, for most of your painting, your painting has a unity. We call it a limited palette, and it's a good thing to try to understand and get used to working with. Have a go at this because it's a really fun exercise to do and I quite like making these and I do it alarmingly regularly for funnily enough. But um, I've got French, French ultramarine here, cadmium red and yellow ochre as three primaries. Yellow ochre and raw sienna are fairly interchangeable for me. Yellow ochre is perhaps less transparent as raw sienna, slightly cooler and a bit more earthy as well. Um, so 
I start with these three, I just add a bit more water, paint another square, add a bit more water, paint another square. I keep working down this column, so down here then I'll add in a little bit of cadmium red, changes it to a, a sort of soft grey, a little bit more red, it's getting pinky, and you, you move down through a, a sort of range of mauves. Then add in some yellow ochre, and it starts to give you these nice sort of orangey browns. A little bit more yellow ochre, you get that one, a little bit more yellow ochre, and so on. Do the same with cadmium red. Add in some yellow and ultramarine. Have a look at that. Yellow ochre, cadmium red. Add ultramarine here, and you get this wonderful range of colours just out of three on your palette. I've done some over here with the earth colours as well. Just as a comparison, so burnt sienna and light red are quite similar. Um, what happens if I mix those with ultramarine? Have a look at each one, see what the difference is. Same thing here with yellow ochre and cadmium yellow and a little bit of Payne's grey. That makes, that gives you a wonderful range of greens. And down here I've just mixed ultramarine and cobalt blue with cadmium red, just to look at the slight difference between the two. And, and this is great fun to do. Why don't you have a go and, and get a piece of paper like this, three colours, maybe a couple of uh, earth colours as well. Just mix them, paint little squares, see what happens, have a look at the differences, compare one with the other and get a feel for what you might like to work with. Now the only other thing I want to show you with colour and colour mixing is it's a rule, and I don't really like rules when it comes to art, but um, it is important when you're mixing colours to start with the main colour first. For example, if I wanted to paint a very yellowy sunlit green, I'll start off with the yellow. That's my base colour. And then I'll add a little bit of blue. That's my lovely sunlit green. Now, if I wanted um, a darker green, a much cooler one, I'd start off with my blue. That's my base colour, because I know that this will be more at the blue end of the scale. And then add in a little bit of yellow. Still green. But it's a, a nice sort of bluey, sort of sea green colour there. Add a bit more yellow, and you, you move closer towards a sort of mid-range green. And being able to do that accurately is, is quite important. And then with three colours, if I want to mix a warm grey, I'll start with I'll start with some red. And then I'll drop in a little bit of yellow. And then go in with my blue. Might need a little bit more yellow there, or a little bit more blue. And I've got a, a rather nice, very warm grey. Now, if I wanted that to be brown, just add in a little bit more yellow. I'm starting to get a nice brown. If I want that to be a lot cooler, cooler grey, I add in more blue. And by knowing your primaries, you can hit these colours quickly and it makes a tremendous amount of difference to your painting. Practicing mixing colour, it's so important. It's one of the most important skills in learning how to progress in watercolour. If you can use a limited palette and mix a range of colours from that quickly and accurately, you're onto a winner. So have a go, keep it simple, practice mixing your colours. I'll see you next time.